Things weren't easy in our house growing up. My father was drinking and he and my mother often fought. What I remember was the fear and feeling like I was walking around on eggshells. And because of this, I was determined never to drink. But the promise didn't last past my 14th birthday. And I felt kind of shy and nervous. And when everyone around me seemed so relaxed drinking, I just followed suit. After I had my first beer, I, I felt like I belonged. And I couldn't believe that I'd found such a simple solution to feeling bad about myself. I started hanging out with the older kids and getting trouble with teachers. And in the end, skipping school. You can't say that about someone's mother. Nah, you can say you it can about me, but you can't say it about No, you can say it about me. Too, My family had no idea where I was half the time. By the time I was 17, I was drinking most days, and I'd convinced myself that I must be just a party girl. But bit by bit, I was losing interest in anything but drinking. <laughs> Get off me! And I would drink anything. Dude, suck. More and faster than anyone else even the drags on the table that nobody would touch. I came from a good home, worked hard as a young boy and won a scholarship at college. At college everybody seemed so confident where I was a bit awkward so it didn't take much pressurising at my first party when the lads offered to add vodka to my coke. I felt confident and one of the lads. I thought I'd finally found a solution to being comfortable in my own skin. I pretty much drank my weekends away at college. And I got a job teaching when I graduated and found it tough going. So I started frequenting the local and met people who drank like me. It made me feel relaxed and I felt it was a reward for getting through a tough day. Yeah, there you go. I hear patience is a virtue. For your troubles. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Thanks, Barry. Yeah, slaunch it. Cheers, down the hatch. My headmaster started asking me about my missing days and my unkept appearance and even the smell of alcohol off my breath. I just have to give you a verbal warning. I decided I'd show him. I, I don't have a drink problem. So I managed to stay off it for a few weeks. But after my first summer's evening, when I drank again, I got arrested for driving over the limit and yeah. lost my licence. I can smell alcohol in your breath. Have you been drinking? I just had one glass of wine after dinner, so... OK, would you mind stepping out of the car for me, please, sir? What's the problem, sir? I was even asked to hand in my resignation at work. Sorry. <laughs> Mr Edwards, I'd like to perform a breath test on you. I had my first drink at 18. I only drank one night and I almost passed out and I was so ill the next day. I didn't like being out of control so I didn't drink again until I was around 30. By then I'd met and married my husband and we had two lovely children. I only married him because I thought no one else had asked me. He was the first man I ever went out with. In my early 30s I started to have a glass of wine whenever my husband and I went for a meal. Then soon I started to buy a bottle to bring home about once a week. I'd sneak a drink in the kitchen before we ate. Pretty quickly I found that with a few drinks the outside world ceased to exist. When I started a small business I felt a huge pressure with the responsibility and my one bottle a week shot up to two, then three or four. My family tried to tell me something was wrong but I just thought they were nagging and it turned into a full-blown argument which was very distressing for them. Yeah, uh, I can do it. Get your hands off me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I can do it myself. I can do it. I can do it myself. I can do it myself. Leave me alone. I was about 11 or 12 years old when I had my first drink at my eldest sister's wedding. I was a barrel of beer there and some of the older men gave me a few small glasses. I really enjoyed the feeling it gave me and I kept coming back for more. By my late teens, I was really enjoying drinking, and my whole social life was geared around the pub. In due course, I inherited the family farm, although some of the family were still involved in running it with me. Despite the responsibility, bit by bit, my heavy drinking in the pub in the evenings with the lads became lunchtime drinking too. Money became tight, so I resorted to selling off sites of land bit by bit but the money only went to pay off debts at the bank and the pubs. It was a terrible mark of shame to me to be selling off our family farm of generations to keep me in drink. I was in a prison of deceit and lies, stealing to get drink. And I was powerless over what would happen after I picked up the first drink. I was a liability when I drank. I became aggressive and violent. 
Blackouts became normal for me. I just wanted oblivion. One of my friends choked to death on his own vomit when, when he was drunk. We were at a party and didn't even notice. Maybe you should take it easy, like we all have to have some. What? Like, oh my God. Oh, I'm only taking a little bit. Like, and G G why are you being. Like, oh my God, you're being so mean. Like, say something. Mind your own business. Like, but even that didn't deter me because I didn't care what people thought of me or what I looked like. I woke up in a cell in the middle of the night with no idea how I'd gotten there. The guards said they picked me up because I'd been causing havoc outside a pub. I was only 18 years old and I felt like my life was over. I hated myself. There I was. I'd lost my job and my driver's licence. But I thought I could turn a leaf and control my drinking if I changed my life. I always felt I had something to prove to be a real man. So I retrained and got a job in a successful accountancy firm and got married. The night we took home our first son, I nipped down to the pub and got smashed. John, the bar's closed. What? I have a home to go to even if you don't. Two the bar's closed. closed. You put your hands in your pockets and give them... Two more. The bar's okay. closed. End of I pay your wages. I'll never forget the look on my wife's face, the hurt, the shame, as I stumbled into the bedroom that night. I don't want to know. Life at home slowly deteriorated as I spent my evenings in the spare room drinking alone. I was in a state of despair and even though I could see it was destroying my family's life, I couldn't stop myself. On top of the rows with my husband and children, I was very depressed and craving drink in the morning, although I'd hold off until the evening. It was when I started to have a few glasses on a Sunday morning, I knew I was in trouble. Mum, are you ready? Whoa. They're just a party, remember? You're not going to tell you party. Nobody wants you at their parties. I was suffering the DTs. My nervous system was shattered. I wasn't sleeping. I was restless, irritable and discontent most of the time. And life was hopeless. I just couldn't see a way out. Things really got worse over the years. I'd leave the house in the morning and I wouldn't be seen till the early hours of the next day. Forget about it. One by one, I lost all my friends. They'd had enough. I was beginning to black out regularly, not eating, looking rough. And any fun I'd found in drinking had turned into a living nightmare. My family had no options but to have me hospitalized in a psychiatric ward. Are you aware of the serious- The doctors situation? told me I had liver and kidney damage and I was heading for a wet brain. They'll go back, won't they? Such was my inability to grasp reality just ease up a that I actually thought once I get out, I'd be able to drink normally again. I'll just ease up a little. No, just a little. It was after I was arrested that it all began to hit me, um, although I did continue to drink. When I finally hit rock bottom, I remembered two AA speakers that had come to our school years ago and told us about AA and how they had once felt hopeless. 15, that's cool. And uh, you like to have a good time and go out and everything with your friends? Yeah, do you not drink? Mm, no, I don't drink anymore, but I used to. And a happy young sober woman said to us that you're never too young to stop. But I couldn't bear the thought of living without you're drink. too young to stop. But I was such a mess, it was the only glimmer of hope in my life. This pamphlet here, you can have a little read of it if you like. What does that sound like? All right. All right. Thanks. See you, Roisin. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, guys. I found the courage, and I picked up the phone, and I rang AA. And someone came and brought me to my first meeting. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. It was very strange at first being with people who were so honest and it took a while for me to have full acceptance that I was one of those people who had a serious drinking problem. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I'm delighted to introduce Roisin who's going to share her experience, strength and hope with us today. But gradually I started to feel and open up and share when I hurt instead of bottling it all up. I'm Roisin and I'm an alcoholic Hi, and I'm nervous because this is my first chair. I was on the brink of losing my family and my second job when my boss 
gave me an ultimatum. I had to go to AA or else that was it. So I just went. At my first meeting, I heard someone say that it wasn't the amount he drank, but the effect it had on him. It was very different to anything that I was used to. There were no bosses, and everybody just helped each other through sharing their experiences. I didn't get sober straight away, though. But people just kept saying, come back, and the only requirement for membership was the desire to stop drinking and that you were willing. I found it very difficult to ask somebody for help, but I was so desperate that I did. Uh, sorry, I was just wondering, could I have a quick word with you? For me, asking for help is the spiritual dimension to the programme. This is my first meeting, and I need help. Well, you've come to the right place. Despite the fact that life was out of control, pride refused to allow me to admit that alcohol was the problem. I went to a counsellor and didn't tell her the truth about the extent of my drinking. I tried to blame all my problems on the pressures in my life. But then one night I was very low, I went online and I found the AA website for Ireland. I rang the After Hours helpline and spoke to a very helpful woman who explained that if after one or two drinks I couldn't guarantee my subsequent behaviour, then I was probably alcoholic. I went to the doors of a few meetings around town, but I was so scared that someone I knew would see me. Eventually I got the courage to go to a meeting and I was told straight away that anonymity is key to AA to protect the identities of the people who attend. That really helped me. Anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions. Who you see here, what you hear here, when you leave here, please let it stay here. Two AA members came to visit me in hospital. I thought they were going to teach me how to drink. Instead, they suggested I come with them to an AA meeting. I was always thinking at the back of my mind, I'm not like these people. I'm not an alcoholic. Then one day, out of the blue, someone told a drinking story and I identified with their rock bottom. I feel it's the only option open to me now at this stage. I've been drinking... Something changed and I realised I belonged and I wasn't a disgrace. I, I don't see any, any... I understood that what I had was a physical allergy combined with a mental obsession. All I had to do was just not take that first drink. What are you doing later on? A day at a time. I'm now two years sober. I couldn't drink normally, but I found a solution. Oh, that was a nice speech. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. I could never have imagined having fun without drink, but I have a load of young friends now, and some drink and some don't drink. My behaviour completely changed at home, and last Christmas, my father joined AA. They say it's a programme of attraction. I love it in AA because it teaches me how to live. I've taken an honest look at myself with the help of another member, who's also my sponsor, and I've finally grown up. I'm back at studying, and I hope to go to college soon. It hasn't been easy, but with not drinking, I have hope and meaning now, and I'm sort of like the person I always wanted to be. My last drink was five years ago. I've lost that sense of uselessness and I've gained an understanding and insight into myself which I've never had before. The most important part for me is to make amends for all the harm that I've caused my family. I brought them to an AA meeting which was open to non-alcoholics such as family and friends in order to show them what it was all about. But after I had my first beer I felt like I belonged and I couldn't believe that I felt... Life is very good today although I'm still facing a lot of tough challenges and I do sometimes get frightened but I know I'll get through these very difficult times with the help of the programme and my AA friends. I enjoy going to AA meetings now. I've been blessed to maintain and sustain my sobriety with the help of my sponsor who showed me the ropes and explained the AA programme to me. Yeah, well you can do them one by one, you don't have to do them all together. I'm now on the telephone after hours helpline and I love the chance to help another alcoholic. When I go on holidays with my husband, I maintain sobriety by going to English-speaking meetings, which are available all over the world. I always remember to repeat what I learned early in my sobriety. AA loved me until I learned to accept myself. I never realised when I was leaving that hospital seven years ago that life could be as good for me and my family as it is today. And I want to thank Roisin um, who did a lovely job on the chair. I learned to pick up the pieces and things are contented today. 
I feel useful again. And I thank God daily for that gift. I could have died, and I'm amazed at life's wonder. I got my sense of humor back again, and I love the saying. Teach us how to laugh again, but don't ever let us forget how we cried. <laughs>